where our, our audio is on the video. Uh, my name is Riyad Bahur. I teach history at Sac City College, and I'm the faculty leader for the semester-long Barcelona trip, which is going to be in the fall of 2019, next fall. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that trip, but before that, I wanted just to make sure everybody knew that Los Rios actually has had a study abroad program for years. Um, and we're part of a four district consortium that has a semester abroad program every semester. Um, every spring semester it's in Florence and then every fall it alternates between Barcelona and London. So this fall, this coming fall it's Barcelona, the following fall it'll be London. And in addition to that we have a couple faculty led trips that you'll hear about today from my colleagues. Uh, one in Florence and one in London that are in the summertime. And it's a great uh, variety to have, actually. There, there are different kinds of study abroad experiences. The summer programs tend to be more focused and economically maybe, um, I don't want to say a better deal because I'm trying to sell Barcelona, uh, but, but a really good deal and a good alternative, right? Uh, and particularly logistically, too, for students who can't maybe take a whole semester abroad. So you'll, you'll hear about three programs today, the Barcelona semester abroad and then the two summer programs um, from my colleagues uh, when I'm done. I have a PowerPoint. I'm not going to uh, bore you to tears by reading everything on the PowerPoint, but it, there is some basic information here about the Barcelona uh, so semester abroad. So it's a three-month program. Actually, it's time to be, it's a semester, but it's a three-month semester. It's time to fit within the 90-day visa period for uh, most of the European countries. So it starts on uh, September 7th and the semester ends on December 6th of 2019. Um, there's some, um, some, some amazing photographs of Barcelona here from the mountain top looking out over the city and the Mediterranean Sea. So Barcelona is a Mediterranean city, uh, a very old one. Uh, the capital of the Catalonia region of Spain, uh, which historically was one of the primary uh, economic, political, and cultural centers of Spain. And you'll, if you do the Bar Barcelona program, you'll also learn quite a bit about Catalonian identity, political identity, particularly these days when there's a revived uh, sense of national pride in Catalonia and even um, activism towards separatism separating from, uh, from Spain. How many of you have heard or seen on the news news about uh, the referendum to separate from Spain? And yeah. Uh, so why study in Barcelona? It's Spain's second city, and some would argue uh, Spain's most vibrant and interesting city, uh, depending on who you are, you might say that. It's a Mediterranean climate, which is basically like the California climate. Right, um, the same types of patterns, rain in the winter, sunshine in the summer, but a long, pleasant fall. Um, doesn't get cold till probably November, so, but you will need a, a jacket by November or December. You get to uh, learn about both Spanish and Catalan culture, and it's a s the, as a city, it's known for the artist uh, Antoni Gaudí and some of the spectacular architectural and artistic gems that Gaudí created in, um, in Barcelona. Um, all the courses offered are transferable to both the UCs and the CSUs. And so there's no course, just a as a rule, there's no course that's offered in the semester abroad programs that isn't transferable and it doesn't fulfill uh, and I get to your GE requirement. Um, we know our students are very practical and so they want to make sure uh, that doing a semester abroad doesn't set them back. The courses are also listed, I believe, in the PowerPoint um, up ahead. Here's some interesting cultural activities, right? Uh, the nearby countryside, the villages around Barcelona are very accessible. Um, within a half an hour's train ride or, uh, or drive, you can be in spectacular scenery in the Catalonia region. And the beach, of course, right? There's, Barcelona has a city um, or municipal beach, very accessible, and then also within 20 minutes or half an hour, kind of more laid back and less crowded beaches, too. Um, AIFS is the, the educational travel organization that organizes all of our study abroad um, trips and experiences. And so they've had 
decades of experience um, in, in general, but also with Los Rios, uh, I'd, I'd say maybe 30 years experience organizing trips for, uh, for Los Rios as well. Um, over 98% of students recommend AIFS after having participated in, uh, in one of their trips. Um, this is supposed to be extra luring as well. You can fly to London, Paris, Rome, and any number of European cities on, um, on really cheap budget airlines, um, sometimes 20 euros, 15 euros if you book in advance enough. Um, every, every week, uh, or almost every week, we, have, we would have Fridays off, so every weekend is a three-day weekend, and then there's also a week off in the, uh, in the middle of the, of the semester. Train uh, travel is also very popular, and Barcelona is very well connected by train, uh, particularly in terms of weekend trips, particularly to France and other parts of, of Spain. Um, but interestingly, the flights are often cheaper than the, than the train trips. So here's, uh, again, some of the logistical information around the dates, including the fall break time. Um, what is included? So what's included is accommodation in twin occupancy apartments. And what that means is uh, twin bedrooms in apartments. Sometimes there are four students in an apartment. It's a regular apartment. It's not a dorm. Uh, so there's a kitchen. And they're not all in one building, so they're kind of um, scattered around town, so you get a real sense of actually living in the city and getting to the, the site of the classes on a daily basis. Um, buildings tend to be not next to each other, but within blocks of each other, so the, the friends that you make and meet in the classes you'll be able to visit with and, and walk to each other's apartments quite easily. Um, Every study, every semester abroad trip includes Spanish life and culture course, or if you're in London, um, a British life and culture course. Um, you also get a travel pass for unlimited travel for the duration of the program within Barcelona, the greater Barcelona area. Um, a cultural calendar of free and subsidized events, meaning AIFS organizes um, visits to uh, famous museums or Gaudi sites. Um, in addition, there are special organized trips um, that you might pay a little bit extra for, but they're, they're at a discounted rate. Uh, and I believe the one in Barcelona for this year is going to be to Morocco, to Marrakesh. Um, and that's because they polled a lot of the families and parents who, uh, whose feedback was, we know our kids want to go to Morocco, and we'd rather they go on an organized trip with you than trying to do it on their own. And so it's a really good way to get to Morocco actually. Um, and then what's called the art ticket pass, which is entry into six museums, which is also an, a really good way to get to the museums um, cheaply, right? Um, what else is included is a pre-departure information, meeting with AIFS about a month before. It's actually about three weeks before departure. Um, they have a 24-hour uh, phone service and on-site student services um, they don't encourage your parents calling every five minutes, but if your parents want to call every five minutes, they can. Someone will be there to answer the phone. Um, and then a comprehensive orientation program in Barcelona. And actually the first day, um, they pick you up at the airport, and then you're, you're housed in a hotel the first night, and then the, the, your very first full day there is an orientation to the city and to the, the program. Um, the, the building where the classes are held has an AFS study center with uh, computers, classrooms, and, and Wi-Fi. It also includes medical and refund insurance. Any questions? I said I wasn't going to read the PowerPoint, but here I am doing it. This is the danger of PowerPoint, right? Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a g that's a good question. So, the fee doesn't include transportation, but AIFS does organize a discounted rate. Usually, uh, sometimes it's six or seven hundred dollars round trip. But as you just said, 
uh, you can, if you book in advance enough, you can get a ticket on Norwegian for three something or 400 or even 500 if you're closer to the date. Um, and you have the option to do it either way as long as you're there on the date that the, the semester starts. So if you wanted to save some money and book on Norwegian, you could do that. If you want to be with the full group um, or most of the group, uh, you can go with the AIFS option. If you book on Norwegian, make sure to pre-purchase a meal or take or pack your meal because they're not going to feed you, right? And it's very expensive. If you, if you don't pre-book a meal and you try to buy something on the plane, it's very expensive. Yeah, it varies. It depends on, they work through, they are sort of a travel agency and they work through other travel agencies. It's usually around, I've never heard of it being more than a thousand, actually. And I believe, Kevin, you just mentioned that the Florence was maybe around six something or, s or 700. Yeah. Um, the numbers I remember from the past are seven, 795, something like that. Yep. Cool. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, that's a good question too. So it's not just Los Rio students, it's students from the four districts that are part of the, of the consortium. Uh, so they'll all be California community college students from this Northern California region. Um, but it's also, as you know, we're, we're kind of open access institutions, so anybody who hears about the study abroad program can become um, a community college student and attend. So occasionally that does happen. There might be students from other parts of the country. All instruction is in English, um, taught by, uh, I'll be teaching three classes, or four if you count the Spanish culture class, although that class is mostly local presenters, guest speakers that, that come in, uh, and then a colleague from each of the other three districts. Um, again, teaching, so I'm teaching classes that are on ARC's catalog, uh, world history from 1500 to the present, Western Civ from the Renaissance to the present, and intro to Middle East studies. And each of the other districts will be teaching classes on their catalogs as well. So the only class that'll have um, maybe some Spanish language, but not really, uh, it's the, the language of instructions in English, but there'll be some Spanish and Catalan offered is a Spanish life and culture class. These are the, the four um, districts that are part of the Northern California Consortium, Study Abroad Consortium. So just to give you a sense of the classes that are being offered uh, from Contra Costa, Anthony Gonzalez will be teaching these three English classes, the short story, starting from the bottom, Intro to Literature and Critical Thinking, the Shaping of Meaning in Language. All of the courses will have, um, have been designed in a way to include the location um, as a kind of relative, relevant component to the content. So they've been adapted to uh, take advantage of being in, in Barcelona and in Europe in general. Um, these are the classes I mentioned that I'll be teaching. And um, Monica Malamud will be teaching linguistics and Spanish. Uh, so w intro to linguistics will be taught in English, right? a survey of language. The other two are um, for people who have taken Spanish before. Spanish conversation through film, which I wish I could take, actually, I might. Um, and then Spanish for heritage speakers. So if you grew up speaking Spanish at home but never studied formally, then um, this is a, that would be a good class for you. And uh, Kirsten Swinstrom is teaching basic concepts of ecology, human biology, and biology of marine mammals, again with the Iberian uh, environment in mind, and all of us have met already and we've talked about doing field trips uh, as part of our courses, sometimes combined with one another's classes uh, when convenient to the, to the content. Uh, we want you to definitely, if you're in Barcelona, we want you to be in Barcelona 
um, and enjoy the time there and, and learn as much as possible in that context. Yes. So, yeah, um, you're, I think you're required to take a full-time load, which is 12, 12 classes total, yeah. So you have 12 classes to choose from, and so you, you, you get some choice, but obviously not the kind of choice you would have if you, if you were here. Yeah, each one is three credits. Um, you, and you can take any of the classes from any of the instructors. You don't have to... You're not held hostage in my classes because you're Los Rios, but you can you can choose from those. Yeah. Um, all of these courses are applicable to transfer? Yes. Yeah. In fact, when we propose them, we have to guarantee that they're UC and CSU transferable. Yeah, so you, I guess you are obliged to take one class from me, right? Uh, and here's some photos of the, of the site itself, the classroom. Here's one of the Gaudi buildings. And as Kevin just mentioned, the Spanish life and culture class is something that um, everyone is required to take. And here's kind of a sampling of the topics. Um, this is probably the funnest class. I mean, they're all going to be fun classes, but this one is extra fun. Um, there's a, there are a lot of guest speakers in the class, mostly guest speakers, so you'll get to meet people from the city itself. Who and, and there are some field trips built into this class as well. It's a very old city, right? The historic center is... Um, you're just walking around, you're imbibing a lot of the culture and history um, around you. A little information about AIFS. Okay, um, American Institute for Foreign Studies, yeah. And we talked about this already, the uh, apartments throughout the, t the city. It's a b big city, right? So th maybe that's going to be an adjustment from living in Sacramento. Um, it's not a city you'll be driving in. doesn't make sense to actually have a car. So you'll be commuting like other people in Barcelona using public transportation or walking. Some photos of the apartments. There's a homestay option um, as well. With a, there's a supplemental fee of 750 for the homestay option. You'd be staying with a local family, and some of the meals are included. Does it say here? Yeah, breakfast, daily breakfast, and five dinners a week, um, and obviously language immersion. So if you want, if you've studied some Spanish and you want to practice it, the homestay is actually a good option to consider. And the homestays are also twin occupancy, right? So the host families uh, will have one bedroom with two twin beds in it, and so you'd probably be placed uh, with another participant. Um, occasionally, it, it's like winning the lottery if this happens, but occasionally if there's an odd number of students, you might luck out and get your own room. Um, if you want to guarantee getting your own room, there's a supplementary fee for that as well, but that's actually very hard. They don't, they can't accommodate everybody, but it is an option if it's something that you want. Um, if you know somebody or, or, or meet somebody who's also going and you think you, you, you could hit it off and are compatible, you can request each other as roommates and they will accommodate that. Lots of good eating. And then here's a list of the museums that's included. 
Um, I don't want to take up uh, time from my colleagues, so if there are any other questions, maybe that's a better use of the next couple of minutes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so if you, uh, that's right, if you have the apartment option, food is not included. So you have to go grocery shopping. Um, you know, I'm assuming you're not going to want to eat out in restaurants all the time. But Barcelona has these amazing markets, um, municipal and neighborhood markets. Every major neighborhood has a large covered market where you can buy things like olives, daily baked bread, uh, different kinds of cheeses. And you could quite easily live off of market food that's not too expensive. Right? Yeah, so Spain uses the euro currency, which is um, currently a, a little bit more powerful than uh, the U.S. dollar. So it is going to be like you have a markup, right? Like a 10 or 20 percent markup. Um, at the same time, you know, th these are good questions. So Barcelona's overrun with tourists, and because of that, a lot of the restaurants tend to be expensive. Uh, but if you kind of have your eyes open and shop like the locals and go to the markets, um, actually food like that is quite affordable and, and you can stay within a reasonable budget. And the ingredients are really good, right? Like good seasonal fresh food. Um, they take their bread very seriously, right? So every day. You, you can count on eating a nice, delicious, warm loaf of bread and some cheese and maybe a vegetable or two. Yeah. Kevin. No, I, th I think Florence, Florence has that, but uh, Barcelona doesn't, yeah. But we'll double check, we can ask, in, in, yeah. Um, the, the homestay option is a good option if you want home cooking, right? So, and that's not a bad price. There was another hand up, did you have your hand up? No? Oh, the flyers, so we've got some flyers up here. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Um, if you're interested in Barcelona, come up here, and we, we've got some London and Florence flyers up here, too, for the summer programs. Um, a lot of the details in here and my contact information, um, I don't think my contact information is on these flyers, but my, my last name is Bahur, B-A-H-H-U-R, and my email address is B-A-H-H-U-R, and then another R, at scc.losrios.edu. So feel free to contact me or the, the information that's on there. And I'll be around afterwards in case there are questions, too. So. Who's next, London or Florence? Hello, I'm here to talk about um, the Florence Summer Program. Uh, <coughs> but before I go on, I would like to say with regard to your question, thank God there's no food in the apartments because one of the greatest joys of studying abroad is going out and shopping. <laughs> <coughs> this, is, this is one of my favorite cultural experiences. Make, that's, you know, th that's the advantage of staying in an apartment as opposed to living in a hotel. In a hotel, you're around tourists, <laughs> going to restaurants around tourists in Florence, living in an apartment. You go out and shop, <coughs> and you're around Italians. 
It also helps with if anybody needs some kind of assertiveness training, right? Because shopping with Italians <laughs> right, will mean if you're passive, the line will get longer, <laughs> right? I found it very useful, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, this will be my 20th year in a row going to Italy. Uh, my 25th time altogether. I first fell in love with Italy in 1983 when I went there to do preliminary research for my dissertation. I got hired here at American River College in 91, and as my meeting with the dean wrapped up, he said, do you have any questions for me? And I said, yeah. What's the opportunity to teach abroad? All right. Now, <coughs> I was raised <coughs> by a very conservative banker father. And so when I went to college, <coughs> I didn't think that I could afford that junior year abroad, right? <laughs> Five years after graduating and in the midst of graduate school, I looked back and I said, oh, I could have done that. Right? <coughs> but the next best option for me was to teach abroad, right? So I did the semester for program in Florence in 1997 and then again in 2003. And very fortunately, I was in uh, Florence in 2004, in 2004, and I ran into the director of the program in Florence, who has since moon on, moved on, and she is the vice president of AFS centered in, in London, right? Uh, <coughs> but she, we were catching up, <coughs> and she asked me if I'd be interested in a summer program. <coughs> and since I've recruited for the semester program twice, it was keenly aware that when you mention study abroad to students, their faces lit up, and then you tell them the cost, and those smiles go away. And so the purpose of the summer program is to provide an opportunity for those. There's no way to replace 13 weeks, <laughs> right? If you can do 13 weeks, do your 13 weeks. But for those people who can't afford 13 weeks, and sometimes it's not a matter of money, it's just a matter can't be away that long, right? <laughs> My program in Florence is five weeks, right? So it's much more affordable and it's easier <laughs> to manage that kind of time away. Now, <laughs> so that's why the summer program was created, but full disclosure, the real impetus of the creation of the summer program was so I can go to Italy every year. You don't jump through all the hoops that were necessary to jump through unless you really want to do it. But the greatest joy of my life as an educator is taking over 250 students to Italy. <laughs> it is truly life transforming. And to see these students <laughs> realize that there are many more options open to them that, than they thought was at all possible before and to see them smile and, and just kind of take a hold of life in a, <laughs> in a different way and to think to myself, I help that happen. Right? <laughs> now, <coughs> the program this year uh, will be, it's a five week program from um, June 2nd to July 7th. Now, here is the Florence, unlike Barcelona, and certainly much unlike uh, like, uh, London, is a relatively small city, about 600,000 in his, you know, but all the apartments will be in the historical center, <coughs> right? Here's the train station, <coughs> here's Il Duomo, the cathedral, <coughs> here's Santa Croce Basilica, and here's the, uh, the study center. Most departments will be within a 10, 15, maybe 20 minute walk. <coughs> Here is, uh, <coughs> this is Piazza Peruzzi. The Peruzzi were one of the banking families in Florence prior to the rise of the Medici, right? <coughs> and there are the student services, AFS. The AFS staff I found are really wonderful in terms of being there when students need them. <laughs> but not in your face if you don't. Right? Oh <coughs> this is a billboard. This is, I don't know, 2006 or 7. <coughs> 
So I created this. Still trying to create this. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> during the time that we're there, University of Louisiana Lafayette, San Diego State, Towson University in Baltimore, Maryland, California State, Fullerton, Florida State, and Miami University will also be there, as well as ARC. What's the difference? <laughs> Four to five thousand dollars. <laughs> ARC is cheaper. It's the only community college. The class that I teach <laughs> is a four-unit humanities class that is accepted for transfer to CSU <laughs> and UC. It's a Getsy, three B in humanities, which means you can take <laughs> a class, paying Los Rios tuition, and have it transferred to any of these other colleges. <laughs> This is <coughs> a relatively typical apartment, right? Uh, since um, the Brits kind of run this from, from London, they're the, the, the people that are on the ground in the European capitals <coughs> and study centers, their expression is this is a self-catering apartment, right? So it's got all the pots and pans that you need. <coughs> and in terms of Italy, one of the cheapest things to do, go to a store and get fresh made pasta. Right around the corner from the school, there's a guy who makes fresh pasta that he sells to the restaurants. You can go there, buy the fresh pasta, right? <coughs> right next door, you can get a loaf of bread. Next door to that, you can get a bottle of wine. <coughs> and you can have a lovely dinner for about seven or eight dollars. <coughs> okay, <coughs> sorry about that one. <coughs> uh, <coughs> you'll have a guided historical tour of Florence the first day, uh, this is Angela Ober. Uh, <coughs> she is the best guide I've had any experience with, bar none. I've gone to Russia three times, I've gone to Florence many times, and in 2005 I met her, and I said, Angela, <coughs> she's a PhD in art history from Germany, and as soon as I met her, I said, you're not gonna be doing this much longer, I know that. So would you promise me one thing? She said, what? Will you stay a guide for my group? And she's only a guide <coughs> for my group and Fullerton. She teaches for Oxford, Georgetown, and other places in Florence. We'll have a welcoming dinner in Florence, <coughs> probably at this place. It's uh, <coughs> called Osteria di Pace. Uh, Pace is Italian for crazy, all right? And the guy that works there is kind of crazy. He's uh, very fond of singing opera songs as he serves us. <coughs> Twelve hours of Italian language are included in the program. <coughs> now, this is not going to make anybody fluent in Italian. But one of the things you find out about Italian, they the Italians, they appreci any, appreciate any effort to speak their language. And so you'll be able to interact with them and hear some pictures of an outdoor market where you can go and order the classes or sometimes go out of the classroom into a market. You order food with the Italian instructor there. <coughs> and if, <you're laughs> if you like coffee, uh, <coughs> one of the daily rituals is after you get ready, <coughs> there'll be a neighborhood bar. And you'll go there <coughs> regularly in the morning to get your morning coffee, all right? Now, they have a drink in Italy <coughs> that I know you've heard of, but I would wager that most of you have never really had before. It's called a cappuccino, all right? <coughs> Starbucks doesn't serve it, all right? <coughs> they call it that, and they charge you, and it's a Euro 20. <coughs> and this is the class that I created, Italian History and Culture. It's basically a spin-off. I think both of our classes were kind of a spin-off of the uh, British life and culture, in this case, the Italian life and culture. And <coughs> the point is to <coughs> put in uh, <coughs> the historical context for students of the place where they're living. All right? Now, 
Our focus is going to be <laughs> on the Renaissance. But since this is Italian history and culture, what is so great is that as students <coughs> you know, live in Florence, not in the class, <laughs> when they come to class every day, they have actually been in the midst of Italian culture. <laughs> and so I ask them about their experiences. <coughs> and then I can, because of my experience, help explain some of the things and some of the, the misunderstandings. All right? <coughs> <laughs> now, <clears throat> this a student took a number of years ago. <laughs> if you go to Florence, you need to read Dante. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I could punish all the students, as well as myself, <laughs> and have them read the Inferno. <clears throat> we only got five weeks. <laughs> all right? So, La Vita Nuova is Dante's love poems to Beatrice. But Dante creates modern Italian. The Italian language is created by Dante. He's all over Florence. And this is a pizza, one of my favorite pizzerias, that has cingali, wild boar, and truffles, and it is called the Dante. <coughs> There's also free time to um, explore Florence. The first week, we're going to have class. We'll leave on a Sunday, get there on a Monday, class on t uh, Tuesday, class on Wednesday, class on Thursday, class on Friday, class on Monday, and from then on, just Tuesday and, and Thursday, with all museum visits <laughs> and as much as possible tr uh, <coughs> trips outside of Florence on a Wednesday. So there will be at least two four-day weekends. which gives you free time to explore Italy. The easiest trip, Pisa, an hour away. The train leaves Florence every hour. It takes about an hour. And as soon as you get back, you go, hey, I can do that train stuff. <coughs> and Venice is about two and a half hours away. <coughs> but if you want to go to Venice, I recommend staying overnight. <laughs> it's going to be obviously much more expensive, but there's something really special about waking up <laughs> in the morning in Venice. This is the Cinque Terre area. And <coughs> students have gone to Barcelona. Students have gone to Athens. Paris is very, very popular. Sometimes uh, <coughs> Munich, Croatia. <coughs> guided museums to, guided tours of the two greatest museums in Florence, <coughs> the Uffizi the greatest Renaissance art museum in the world, and the Bargello, primarily sculpture. Also, <coughs> the Academia, <coughs> and the Academia was built and finished in 1872, and the Academia has one purpose and one purpose only, to house this. <laughs> All right? That's why it was built, and one of the things that the Italians are really, really good at you can see it on their plates when they serve you, right? You can see it in this presentation, right? They make things <laughs> look good. There's also a <coughs> Duomo ticket. <laughs> a little, Duomo is not mean dome, right? Duomo means, right, the house of God. So basically, there's only one Duomo or one cathedral in every Italian town. It is the, the church of the bishop. So it's the bishop's church. Every other church is a basilica. Right? St. Peter's in Rome is technically a basilica. But the Duomo ticket is uh, included in the program. Entrance into <coughs> the cathedral Entrance to climb the bell tower, entrance to climb the dome. <coughs> entrance with a guided tour of the baptistry, one of the oldest buildings in Florence. God. And <coughs> This museum has been around a long time, but it was closed for almost four years. Uh, and they remodeled it. Museo de Opero del Duomo. Basically, the works of art that were on the cathedral 
<laughs> back in the 16th and 17th century. And what they did <laughs> was replicate the bottom third of the cathedral on this wall and then put all the statues where they originally were in the 16th century. <laughs> first, first I, I mean, I was just awestruck when I saw it for the first time a couple years ago. I just stood there and got goosebumps. <laughs> and <laughs> you can't talk about Italy without the food. <laughs> and this is a cappuccino. Right? It's a very simple thing, but starting my day with a cappuccino and a little heart staring up at me, it's just a nice way. We all also have a private wine tasting in the Chianti region where we'll go out with uh, <coughs> Todd. Here's Todd Bolton. Uh, <coughs> he's actually local. His mother lives in Cameron Park. He grew up here, had an Italian girlfriend in high school in the Bay Area. They graduated. She says, I'm out of here. I'm going back to Italy. And he said, OK, I'll go. And <laughs> he ended up. <coughs> learning Italian uh, <clears throat> and organizing this company called Tuscan Trails where he gives privately escorted tours throughout <coughs> Chianti. All right, we'll have lunch together, go to two wineries. Right. Our day trip will be to Siena and San Gimignano. <coughs> All right. <laughs> And one thing that's not included in the semester program is Rome. Now, it is an option that you can pay extra for. It's an option for San Diego State that they pay $600 more for. <laughs> From the very beginning, <laughs> I thought Rome was essential to be incorporated for every student in the program. <laughs> it's just not going to work in my mind if some students go to Rome and others don't. So we'll be in a centrally located hotel. All right, <laughs> tour of the Colosseum, the Forum, Vatican Museum. <sighs> this is my favorite building in the world, the Pantheon. Right. Now, <clears throat> Riyad, you mentioned something that flashed in my mind when you were talking about it. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, it's just like any place else. I went to graduate school in Santa Barbara, right? <clears throat> and there were restaurants in Santa Barbara <coughs> that where the food was not very good uh, <coughs> because they were very famous places and they were, you know, across the <coughs> from the beach or someplace like that. Well, the same in any, any part of the world. My point here is that <coughs> the Pantheon is not the best place to eat. Right? Because those tables are always going to be full. Uh, <coughs> and their food kind of declines accordingly. <coughs> so my recommendation, the drinks are all the same. <coughs> <coughs> this is the Trevi Fountain. And the idea of throwing coins in it works 20 years in a row. This is the Spanish Steps. <coughs> We will probably not see the people on the right. If any of you are familiar with this movie, it's, I, I love this movie, it's Roman Holiday. St. Peter's. <coughs> Vatican Museum. This is Trastevere. Trastevere, um, uh, the, the Tiber River in Italian is Tevere, so Trastevere means on the other side of the Tiber. So it's a kind of Greenwich Village area and a departing meal at one of my favorite trattoria. Uh, I mean, these groups are like children. <laughs> you look at, oh, I remember them. All right, here's the cost. <coughs> That's with, uh, with 20 students. There's more details in the brochures up here. That does not include airfare. Right, so, I mean, the problem with, I mean, 
The only distinct disadvantage of the summer programs, I mean, because I think the summer programs are better in terms of the weather, by and large, but airfare is in shoulder or high season, so airfare is going to be more expensive. But this is the group airfare, <coughs> 1530. Two years ago, it was 1800, right? <coughs> so a lot better than that. And there is a meal voucher <coughs> for $175. It allows you to go into select trattoria. Trattoria is an Italian restaurant that is more family, you know, not as formal. All right. And you, you hand over your meal voucher, and they'll give you a reduced menu, and you can usually pick a first plate, a second plate, a side dish, and water, and it includes tack tip and service. All right. Whatever financial aid you get can be applied to this. The Gilman Scholarship is the biggest scholarship for study abroad, government scholarship. Uh, <clears throat> now, the problem now is that you cannot be dependent on the Gilman Scholarship because you won't know if you got it until after the deadline for this. I think, uh, all right. Can, can he talk just a couple minutes? Yeah. Daniel, just, I, I took too much time. Oh, okay. All right. Do you just want to say a couple words? Uh, sure. All right. Sorry. <laughs> Daniel went last year. Hi, everyone. Um, so, of course, I went to Italy knowing that it's a beautiful country and um, the food is great and I would learn history there. But, you know, it wasn't until I actually got there that it really sunk in. I mean, the connection to history is just all over the place. Um, Professor Rison just showed us some of the more famous places that um, the program will take us to, but you can hardly walk a couple blocks without running into some old church with um, beautiful art. Um, it's just really, it takes actually going there for it to sink in. Um, and, um, and then, of course, um, really the the tour is with Angela, like Professor Wrightson said, are excellent. They really bring out the connections between the different um, historical events, so you get the bigger context, which um, Professor Wrightson himself does quite effectively in his classes. Um, and you know. Um, Italy really, um, in a sense, has kind of, has historically been really um, a, a, a major world player in terms of culture. And going there will really drive that home for you. You'll see, well, like going to Rome, you'll just, you'll see the Vatican. This is the seat of the Catholic Church. Billions, I mean, of people um, are, of that, uh, are of that faith. And um, in Florence, it's the, it was the epicenter of the Renaissance, totally transformed Western civilization. So those are, that's really what I see as the value in it. So leaving me just a little bit of time is actually by design. I don't want you to feel bad about Bill. <laughs> it's by, kind of by design. Actually, last year at this time, I had a few students going. I ended up with a kind of a small group, but it was kind of nice to have a small group. And Bill had 22 students last semester, last year. And it's the opposite this semester. That's just kind of the way it works. Recruitment just is up and down. It's hard to predict. I'm probably going to take around 20 students, and I have 17 right now. And I have probably three others, maybe more, that have told me, I'm going to go for sure. And I told them, yeah, but if you're going to go, I need you to commit really soon, otherwise you're going to get shut out. And that's, that's where I'm at right now. But I think there's room in there for a couple more who beat the others out. And maybe even, I'll probably, sometimes people drop out, um, I'll probably take actually 22 or so. Okay, how or where do you commit? In all of our programs, the commitment is the application through AIFS. It's an online application. I actually had that on my website, studying, studying London website, until yesterday, and I took it down.
because I've literally had five people this semester who filled it out completely, paid the deposit. That's the other thing you need to do to, to sight unseen, not having talked to them at all, they're in. And I can't have that happen anymore. And if otherwise I may have more than I can handle in London. Um, but anybody that wants the application link and is serious about going, I'll give you the application link today. Um, have to, I'll email it to you because it's kind of hard to give it to you verbally or whatever. Um, and that way, I don't get so many that I can't handle, but some of you that want to go, definitely, th there's still a possibility. So, just some things this, to see in and around London, real quickly. I love London because, and actually been to Barcelona three or four times, Florence three or four times, and Italy several times. Love Italy and Barcelona, amazing places. The thing about London that's exciting is that it's so eclectic, so diverse. One of the most diverse eclectic cities in the world in terms of people and everything that's happening, including architecture where you have 21st century tallest building in Western Europe kind of thing. And right across the Thames River, you got 11th century Tower of London. And it's just, that's just the way London is, all this amazing historical stuff that's mixed in with current West End theater and, and everything else that's going on. It's exciting. London has been voted, according to some web types at websites, as the second most exciting city in the world. And having been to New York City, again, most recently over the break, I don't agree with the number one, New York City. There's just no way that London is less exciting than New York City, but I'll take number two. It's, it's okay on, on that list. Um, the thing about London is, is it, okay, maybe it may be slightly less exciting than New York City, but it has way more character, way more culture, way more personality. I actually did get this close to the Queen and the balcony and all of that. Just some other things that you can see in and around London. Students often go off, off to Dover on a three or four day weekend. But these are some of the things that where we actually do go on our day trips. We spend a day, a morning in Stonehenge, and then afternoon in, the, in Salisbury. And the next day trip that we're going to do the second week is Bath, the ancient Roman Bath around the spring that they built their temple around and their entire social life. Also, all the um, Bath is kind of a resort destination for, resort's maybe not the right word, but a destination for leisurely time for the rich and famous for hundreds of years, actually, in, in uh, England. So we go there for a day. We go to Darwin's house in the morning one day and go, come back through Greenwich, see the Prime Meridian, the, the Royal Observatory, and the Naval Academy buildings there. And then another day trip was out, out to Cambridge, Stephen Hawking territory. And in London, we go to all the some of the best museums in the world, the best archaeological museum in the world, the British Museum, Westminster Abbey, where every king and queen in England has been coronated since 1066, National Art Gallery and the National Portrait Gallery and the Tower of London, Freud's house because I teach psychology there, and Darwin's house because that ties into psychology as well. This year, Les Mis is definitely on the agenda. I'm not sure the other one that we're going to see, the other West End show we're going to see. We have seen this one. Last year we saw Phantom, but I want to go to see something else this year. This year we're seeing Twelfth Night in the Globe Theater. I do believe this poll. <laughs> Most best city in the world for university students. Why? Because it has a huge number of world-class museums, some of the most visited museums in the world, and they're all free, readily accessible. Some idea of, that, of the diversity and population in London. I always say that when you're riding public transportation and the tube is amazing in London, you're just as likely to hear an, a foreign language as English. And if it is English and it's British English, you may not understand it. 
<laughs> and that's just kind of cool. This is my 2012 group. You could form lasting relationships. People often tell me that the three most important things about their experience in London is one, just all the amazing sights and history you're exposed to. Second thing is the social bonding that occurs. The third thing is the independence growth experiences that occur. This guy and this girl didn't know each other. They got married two years ago. They were an item about two weeks into it. It's kind of fun to watch that. <laughs> 2013 group, 2014 group, 2015 group. Last year, smaller group. This is our first night eating at the Indian restaurant on Brick Lane. And a few, couple of weeks later on London Eye, some of us. So again, May 25th to June 23rd this year. This is a pretty decent list of some of the things that, of the things that we include in the trip. We focus on British culture, Freud, Darwin, and other people associated with psychology. 4495 for the apartments, 650 less for the homestays, and the flight this year is $430 cheaper than it was last year. It's crazy how that works. Florence flying a week later is so much more expensive, and I don't mean to to <laughs> emphasize that, but I'm just amazed that 889 is what we're paying this year for the students. It's a really good price. And if you can find something cheaper, maybe you can, um, go for it. But I think this is a pretty decent price. My due date is March 1st, but I'm going to close before then. This is where we have class. This is where the AIFS offices are right across the street. And this is not where we're staying this year. I'm pretty excited about this. The location for the students this year is 245 Baker Street, which is right next door to the Sherlock Holmes Museum. And if you Google, if you Google map 245 Baker Street, you can see the small crowd in front of the Sherlock Holmes Museum and see that it's right on the edge of Regent's Park. And if you take a look at where the closest tube station is, Baker Street, it's a minute away. And so door to door, from where we have class and most everything in central London, where you're going to spend the majority of your time is 15 minutes away, literally 15 minutes. If you do homestay, you live in places like this, outside in, outside in the north area of London. More cultural experience if you do the homestays. If you are interested, you could go to this site to see the details. I don't have the application there, but if you give me your information here, I'll email you the link today. And we just need to communicate about the deposit so I can get you you're committed. And I can stick around.